12. I want us to consider Psalms, the fifth chapter, verse number 11 and verse number number 12 on this morning. Notice Psalm 5 and 11. Notice what the psalmist said. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. Notice there is a reason to rejoice and to ever shout for joy when you recognize in whom you have placed or put your trust in to the point to where you know about the God that you serve that he will defend you. Notice this. He will defend those who trust in him. And based upon that, look at a neighbor, tell your neighbor the subject this morning. The Lord defends those who trust in him. Tell somebody, the Lord defends those who trust him. Look at one more person, tell them to say, the Lord defends those who trust him. Give the Lord a praise if you believe the subject on this morning. Come on, give him a praise if you know that it is truth. Number one, when it comes to defending, I think it's very important that we as saints, as those who have put our trust in the Lord, that we recognize when God defends his children, that number one, he is divinely protecting them. He is always divinely protecting his people. And he's doing it to the point to where there is never a time that we are without protection. I want to say that again. There is never a time that if you trust God the way that you need to, and if I trust him the way that I need to, there will never be a time in our lives that we will be without divine protection. That, 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 that's how he so watches over those who put their trust in him. That again, God is committed to divinely protecting his children. And, but it also has to do with when God is defending those who put their trust in him. That he has them divinely covered. He has his people divinely covered. Now when you talk about defending people. When you talk about protecting and covering folk. Sometime in life all of these words in my opinion. My humble opinion. A lot of time people use these words too loosely. They, 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 they use these words if you will in an inappropriate way. Because we, we often try to define certain things to people or attach things to people that are simply not true. And of course, sometimes we do it because we get caught up in to sayings and slogans. Don't ever act like you ain't never heard a commercial to the point to where you begin to repeat something, but, but you really didn't recognize the comparison that you were making. You know, I've heard people say dumb stuff, not meaning to be dumb, but they'll say stuff like, God got you covered like all state. But, but, but see, I come to tell you, God is, God has you covered way more than all state could ever dream a phantom of having you covered. Come on, somebody need to give God a praise. You know folks folk say again dumb stuff like God got you covered like all state. No, no, no. Am I right about that? that, that, that that's, that's the wrong comparison to make. Am I right about that? Because when you look at how God again divinely protects when you look at how he divinely covers, you have to understand about him 
that he is sovereign. You have to always keep in mind the supremacy of God. What does that mean, Pastor? That means when it comes to God divinely protecting, when it comes to God divinely covering his children, we need to understand about him in doing so that he has all power and all authority. In the Old Testament, they often referred to God as being Yahweh or Jehovah. And they would often say of God, after many had watched him go to work or a fight or, or, or they understood that he was capable of defeating his people's enemies even sometime without the need of their help and, and so Israel got to the point to where they started laboring him the Lord of hosts they understood about Yahweh or Jehovah that he was the God of the armies he was the heavenly captain or chief commander of his people's army and back in the day most kings would lead their armies into battle because the king had so much prompt about him that when he led his army into battle it would often strike fear into the enemy listen to me when they saw the king's crown and his men who followed him again it would strike fear into the opponent of the people when they saw the majesty the authority authority and the power of the king leading his army but God had something that he wanted to show Israel he wanted to show Israel that when it come to being in a battle you always need to understand about me though you can't see me with your natural eyes that I am the chief commander I am the one who leads my people into battle and I lead them out of battle and while in battle, I divinely protect them. I divinely cover them from anything doing that which I have not ordained to be done. And those of you that's getting excited, you should. Because you're in a battle, but the Lord of hosts is with you. I said God is fighting for you. Why is he fighting for me, Pastor? To ensure that you get the victory. I wish somebody give him a praise that know that know you ain't in this alone. I'm not in what I'm going through by myself. No. Am I right about it? Anybody recognize he divinely protecting you? God has the ability to so cover his people that no matter what's happening, he can say things to his people that no other man can proclaim in truth. That's how much he's protecting us. God told Israel, he said, none of these diseases will come near you. Who has the power, saving God, to protect a people in such a way? So ask me, do you believe in natural immunity? I believe in divine immunity. I believe God can put a hedge around you. Am I teaching right? Am I teaching this right? That nothing or nobody can get to you. Some of us done got shaky in in our belief you fearing things that you shouldn't fear you're not understanding who's protecting you who's got you covered again folks saying dumb stuff God got me covered like an umbrella in the rain You ain't never had it rain so hard that it made you trade in your umbrella, made you upgrade. But even when the wind gets to throw in the rain, an umbrella is not enough to keep you dry. We got to teach this right. 
But see, to cover means that God has a hedge. In the Hebrew word, it again refers to to be fenced in. In other words, when it comes to God's children, every one of us, this ain't a pastor thing. Come on, this ain't a minister thing. All of his children, he divinely protects. All of his children, he divinely covers. To the point to where God has laid down boundaries of what your enemies can do. But because those boundaries are there, there are certain things your enemy can't do even if they want it to do it. But see, again, understand his sovereignty. Understand his supremacy. Supreme power. Supreme authority. Because all nations draw boundaries. They draw boundaries on land and they draw boundaries in the sea. That says to foreign nations that you can't come beyond this point. If you do, it means war. Come on, you, you have so-called invaded a sovereign nation. But here's the difference between God and man. Man can set a boundary. Man can draw a boundary, but he can't keep the enemy from crossing the line. What God said, you got to let my people know is that I will draw the line. And with my spoken word, I will not allow the enemy to cross that line. Look at somebody saying, God don't argue with your enemies either. Somebody need this word because you're in a battle. You're in warfare. But you got to understand because you trust him, he has drawn boundaries. In everything that you go through, in everything that I go through, he's drawn boundaries. Can I keep it real? Yes. A person who put their trust in God has no business being afraid of storms. Amen. You really don't have to be afraid even when you're home alone. Because if you really understand God, then you know that you never alone. Come on. Pastor, don't nothing scare me. Watch yourself. Because if we ain't trusting him the way that we need to, you can feel worry coming on about something. You, you, you know when you become overly concerned about people and situations. Every one of us know when we overly concerned. Worrying to the point to where there's nothing you could physically do. And Jesus himself told us and made it plain that can any of you by worrying add one cubit to his stature? In other words, he wanted to ask his disciple, can you by worrying change a situation? And of course the answer was what? No. No. But when you don't know in this life, in this world that we live in, if you are unsure about who's protecting and who really has you covered, you're going to worry at some point. Y'all know that's real. Now notice Job 1. Notice Job 1. I'm dealing with boundaries. I'm dealing with God having a person fenced in. I want to biblically prove to you the sovereignty of God when it comes to protecting his children. Job 1 and 9. Let's pick it up at Job 1 and 9. Notice what the Bible said. So Satan answered the Lord. You got to understand, Satan is answering the Lord. And Satan has, in so many words bragged about his ability going to and fro in the earth like he was in charge. But God in verse 8 said to Satan, while you bragging, I'm paraphrasing, about all that you're doing, watch this, God dropped Job's name or brought it up to the devil. And he asked the devil, have you Consider my servant Job. And I want you to notice something about the devil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? 
Notice in that, Satan admits to knowing Job. He, no, no, he didn't say, no, I, I don't know him. Who, who is Job? Woo! See, I'm trying to show you even Satan sometimes recognize people who really trust God. Do, do you see it? So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? This is what I want you to see. Have you not made a hedge around him? And all around his household. And all and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands. And his possessions have increased in the land. Notice that Satan attributes Joe's protection and covering to something that the sovereign God is doing for him. He said you have placed a hedge around it. You've drawn a boundary. Watch this. Job so trusted God. That God didn't just put a hedge or covering around Job. But God said no Job. This hedge is going around all your household. And I'm going to cover everything that you own or everything that's connected to you. Now that's a covering. I said that's full coverage. I said that's full coverage. And there are no small lines. No loopholes. That allows the protection to try to escape from the covenant of being the protector. Look at my say, God don't work like that. Shout to him, he never breaks covenant. Shout to somebody that he never breaks covenant. He said, you, you, you done put a hedge around him. You got him fenced in. And his household. And all of his possessions. What am I showing you this morning? That when God gave Satan the boundaries, he didn't even think about crossing. Satan knows that God alone is sovereign. Do you, see, do, do you hear what I'm saying? He knows that God is, is sovereign. Even when he sought permission later on to attack Job, God still will draw boundaries. God said, you can do this. You can do this. I'll let you do this. But his life, you can't cross it. Now, folks will look at you crazy now, Dave. If you had a nerd tell them, look, God, God said about my life that, that death can't cross that line right now. Oh, who you supposed to be? No, it ain't about who I supposed to be. It's about the one whom I serve. And you understand it, who he is. Because God is not trying to be nothing. He is the I am. When Moses told him, who am I going to tell Pharaoh is sending me with this message to let his people go? God said, tell him that I am that I am, which means I will be whatever I need to be for my people. Whoa. He's a healer for his people. He's a deliverer for his people. You better turn in victory if you know God has been there for you. I dare you to turn in victory again letting everybody know he's been there for me. He's been what I needed. Has God been what your spouse couldn't be? Has he ever showed up and did what your job couldn't do? What your money couldn't do? Be seated. But you know what one of the problems is? I asked y'all a question. Do you know what one of the problems is? I don't have time to deal with all the problems. But do you know what one of the problems is? 
when it comes to God defending his people is that it's easy to have a mindset that I'm going to fight my own battles. I said it's easy to have a mindset that even though God is committed to divinely protecting you, divinely covering you, it doesn't mean that you cannot take on the mindset, listen to me, mindset having to do with your attitude or our disposition. There have been times that we were battling things and God was divinely protecting, God was divinely covering, but we decided to fight the battle ourselves. And we erred. I said we erred. Come on, anybody ever been guilty beside me? We erred. God was doing what needed to be done. But we took on an attitude and in our thinking, in our talking, as well as in our actions, we were going to fight our own battle. And that's a mistake. Tell somebody, that's a mistake. Look at somebody, just ask him here, why fight your own battles? We have him now. I'm not saying to us that we are left without anything to do. Because y'all know how I teach or how the word teach. We have our part. And God has what? His part. But we don't fight our own battles. We don't get into self when we're dealing with things. Proverbs 14, 12. There's a way that seems right to a man. But the end is the way of what? Death. When we start to think that we know more than God or we know how to get the victory faster than how it seems God is delivering victory. You're messing up. You're messing up. And, and listen to me. All of us have messed ourselves up enough already to know that we don't need to fight our own battles. You better point at yourself and just say, I don't need to fight my own battles. I need to just trust you, God, and understand that you're defending me. You're defending me. You have this under control. Do you know God is never out of control? Ooh, but have you ever wondered if God was in control or not? I mean, I'm just being one. I knew I was going to get some very, some very silent and quiet because some of us, we want people to think, no, Pastor. No. Ever since the first day I got saved, I've always put my trust in God. Always, Pastor. No. No, I don't think that's the case with nobody that's here. That's been saved more than two weeks. I ain't giving you but two weeks. If you've been saved over two weeks. I know there's been a time in your life. Where what you were seeing. What you was experiencing. Convince you. Where is God? Where's God in all of this? Why is God not doing this? And see, when you take on that attitude, you're going to begin to fight your own battles. Look at 2 Kings. Look at 2 Kings. And sometimes our enemies, being people as well as situations, want us to try to fight our own battles. Look, 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 look at 2, 2 Kings real quick. Here is Hezekiah and Judah up against the king of Assyria, who at the time in history had such a 
violent reputation that just his name alone, listen to me, just his name alone struck fear in his enemies. He didn't even have to be in the place where he made a threat. And just his threat of what he would do demoralized men. Are y'all hearing me? You know, if you don't put your trust in God in the way you need to, there are threats that will grab you and turn you every which way. But, but what? But he was so feared that even the threat of him coming and you not surrendering. Understand, there were kings like the king of Assyria that many times because he was so feared, he didn't even have to fight a battle. He took the heart of the opponent to the point to where many surrendered without a fight. They bowed down to him, sent him presents, gifts, gold, silver, became his humble servant just off the threat of what he would do. But now he's fighting Hezekiah. But see, he has, Hezekiah has something that other folk didn't have. Hezekiah has a genuine connection with a prophet. Thank you for watching the Making People Productive broadcast with Pastor Leonard D. Cochran of A Place of Refuge, Noonan. To order your copy of today's message, please call the church office at 770-252-3855 and reference the message number listed below. We want to hear from you. If you have been helped, strengthened, or encouraged by the word, let us know. Also, don't forget to connect with us on all of our major social media platforms to receive exclusive information and updates with all things Refuge Noonan. A Place of Refuge Noonan is located in the city of Noonan, Georgia. If you would like to visit us, our worship times are every Sunday at 1015 a.m. on location and live at 1045 a.m. We also have service every Wednesday at 715 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube Live.